Hello, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion and today's tutorial is going to show you how to hand quilt. Hand quilting is a stitch that goes through all layers of a quilt sandwich. It helps keep the batting from shifting inside the quilt. Even though it's a practical element of sewing a quilt, it can be decorative and beautiful. Ready to see how it's done? Let's go ahead and get started. Here's just a sample quilt sandwich that I have. So I have my top layer, I have my batting, and then I have my bottom layer, and they're just basted together. I use the spray basting, and I'm just using it for this demonstration. Now you want to do, use your fabric marker to draw the design that you want to stitch. It just makes it a lot easier than just trying to do it freehand. If you need help, you can purchase little plastic templates like this, and it's usually found in the quilting section. And then it just makes it a little bit easier for you to do something a little bit more exact. I could just use my fabric marker to go in the slots to draw this design. I do this before I even put my quilt sandwich in a hoop. So let's bring that in. So it's just a wooden hoop that I'm using. You can obviously buy these a lot bigger, especially if you're working with a fairly large quilt. You probably don't want to use something this small, but I'm just going to use it for my example. Now when I place this in the hoop, my quilt sandwich, I actually want to keep it, because usually when you do embroider, you want this to be fairly tight, but I actually don't want it to be tight. So after I place it in my hoop, I'm going to press down on it because I want it to be a little bit looser inside the hoop. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're stitching it. The type of thread I'm going to be using is hand quilting thread, and it's actually a cotton thread, but it has a coating on it. So it's really wiry and that really makes it handy because it's not going to get knotted up very easily since we're going to be going through the fabric layers a lot and we don't want to get any knots constantly because that's just annoying. So I'm going to cut a piece to put on my needle. The type of needle I'm using is a between needle and these are actually really good for hand quilting. And I already put it on my needle. So I have a short tail but it's mostly a single strand. And for doing a knot, I'm gonna do a quilter's knot, so I'll show you how to do that. So I have my needle in my left hand, and in my right hand, I'm holding my thread. And I'm going to take the end of the thread and put it next to my needle. I have the pointy side of the needle facing towards my other hand. So now I'm gonna hold this with my left hand. I'm gonna wrap it around the end of the needle three times. Let's try that again since I let go. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm gonna pull it down so I'm able to pinch it between my left fingers here. Now with this hand, I'm gonna grab the needle and I'm gonna pull it through and I'm still not letting go with my left hand. So once it gets pulled all the way through, you should end up with a knot. The last thing you're really going to need is going to be a thimble. Now I'm going to use this coin thimble here, but there's different varieties that you can use. There's some that look like the traditional thimble, but it has a flat top. You just really have to try them out to see which one's going to be comfortable for you. I have small fingers and I really like the coin thimble because it's not slipping off my finger constantly. So you want something that's going to be snug and yet still be comfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And I'm putting this on my middle finger of my left hand because that's my dominant hand. So I may do things a little bit backwards than what's comfortable for you. Again, you're just gonna have to test it out and see what works for you. I'm gonna grab my between needle with my knotted thread. And just to start off, I'm just gonna kinda start, like I'm gonna be mostly sewing on my lines here. But my first part is actually gonna be off my line and I'm just gonna come to where my line starts. That's because we're gonna pull through, and I'm just going through the top layer. I'm not going through all the layers, just the top cotton part here. And I'm gonna pull this through, and you're gonna see, you're gonna see my knot, and I'm looking at the right side, but if I pop this, and I just rub this, now my knot is underneath my first layer, and you're not gonna be able to see it on either side. So that's a nice way to start. And essentially what you're going to be doing, let me just take off my thimble for a second, is going to be a running stitch. So again, I'm looking at the right side. 
I'm going to do a very small stitch. I say all my stitches are about an eighth of an inch in length. I'm going to go straight down through all layers and then I'm going to come up and your the goal is to make all your stitches look consistent. So I'm coming up about an eighth of an inch away from that and then going down. So that's essentially what the stitch is. Now you can do the running stitch just like I showed you for the whole thing and it would be fine. The problem is, if, especially if you're doing something that's fairly large, it's going to take you a long time because you're basically doing one stitch at a time. There's another way to do it and it's still a running stitch but it's called the rocking technique and it just goes a little bit faster because you're doing three or more stitches at once. So it just, it seems like it's going to be an easy process but I definitely recommend practicing it and you'll see that you'll eventually get the flow of it and it'll become a lot easier the more you do it. I'm going to show you how to do this without any thread on my needle and without a thimble because I think it might be a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. Now my right hand is going to be underneath my fabric like this where I'm stitching so that I'm able to feel when the needle pokes through the fabric. My other hand, we're going to say my middle finger is the one with the thimble is going to be handling the needle like this up on top. Now this is why you need a needle or thimble to protect your finger because doing this technique a lot, you're going to start feeling it on the end of your finger and it's really going to start hurting. So the thimble is really just to protect you and it makes this technique a little bit easier. So for my first stitch, I'm going down and I'm just pressing it until I can feel it poke through on the other side. You're going through all three layers. As soon as I feel it coming through, on my right hand, I'm going to rock it back and then I'm going to push it forward and I'm actually using my thumb to kind of position where I want the needle to poke through my fabric. Again, you want to take small stitches. Now as soon as it comes up through the fabric on the right side, I'm going to rock it back down. So now it's going through the all three layers again to the bottom and as soon as I feel it poke through on the bottom, with my right hand, I'm going to rock it back up and again, I'm going to push it through. Then rock it back down so it goes through our laters and then I'm going to rock it back up. And so I'm constantly using this finger with a thimble to just kind of rock it into place. And then once I take a few stitches, like this is about three stitches, then I can go ahead, push it through, grab it with these two fingers and pull it all the way through. Depending on what type of thimble you're using, it's probably going to vary how you do the stitching. And you'll notice as you start doing it, which finger is really going to need that protection. Now, if you're using the traditional thimble that has the flat top, mostly what people like to do is they're mostly using the top of their finger as they're rocking the needle back and forth through the fabric. And a lot of the thimbles that you use have these little dimples which is nice because the end of your needle can actually fit into one of those, those dimples and that'll keep your needle more in place instead of slipping around. Now because I'm using this coin thimble, I can't really use the top of my finger because I don't have any dimples and this will just cause it to slip. So instead what I do is as I'm taking my first stitch to rock it, I slide the end of the needle so it fits in this ridge right on the end and then I use my thumb to kind of hold it into place so then I can go ahead and rock it this way. Now it's not on my finger, so let me just slip this on my finger so it's a little bit easier. So now I can do it like this and kind of rock it back and forth and it's still protecting my finger and I'm kind of using the ridge of the leather to protect my hand and to keep the needle into place. And then when I push it through, I can go ahead and use those dimples to really hold it into place as I push it all the way through the fabric and pull my thread all the way through. All right, so let's go ahead and do this with some thread now. So I'm going to grab my needle. So I'm going to push down until it just goes through the other side. And I'm going to rock it up. Once it comes up, I'm going to rock it down, rock it up. And if you find that you take too big of a stitch, just pull out the needle and do it again. Rock it down. And then once it comes through all three layers, I'm going to rock it back up. Now I'm going to push through with my thimble. Then I'm going to pull it through. So there I took three stitches. 
Now I'm just going to repeat the process. Rock down, rock up. Oops. Since you're only going in a little way, sometimes it pops back through, so you got to do it again. And then we'll go up for our last stitch, and then I'll use my thimble, push it through, grab it with these two fingers, pull it all the way through. Next, I'm going to show you how to end a stitch. So this is where you want to go ahead and tie a knot, but again, we don't want that knot to show. So I still have my thread on my needle. I'm going to create a loop with my thread, and then I'm going to put my needle through that loop, and I'm going to pull it slowly because I kind of want to control where that knot ends up. I don't want it to be right next to where my thread is coming out, but maybe a little bit of ways from that because I still want to do one final stitch right here. You can see I left a little bit of a gap. So here's my knot right here. And I'm gonna go through for my last stitch, just going through that top layer. I'm not going through all three layers. And then I can go ahead and come out anywhere I want. I'm just gonna come out right there. I just wanna make sure that this stitch and the stitch where I'm coming out is greater distance than from where my thread is coming out of my fabric and my knot, because I wanna make sure that my knot is gonna end up underneath my fabric. So we'll just, that should be enough. So I'm gonna pull this all the way through. Now it's gonna stop at that knot, but again, you're gonna pull it to pop it, and now it's gonna be underneath my fabric, and I'm just gonna use some embroidery scissors here so I can get really close and cut as close as I can, and then just rub that. And there you go. So there's a knot underneath there, but you're not gonna see it on the right side of your quilt. When you're not doing hand quilting on your quilt, make sure that you take it out of your hoop. You don't wanna just leave it in there in between stitch times. So this is the right side where I just stitched. Now we'll flip it over so you can see what it looks like on the wrong side. So you can see very little stitches here. We don't see any knots, so it's very clean looking. And it's actually really cool. Let me just bring in one that I did on a darker fabric. So it's a little bit more dramatic looking and you can really see the stitches. So you can use a matching thread if you want, or you can go ahead and have fun and use a contrasting thread. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at professorpincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.